Just have a go at this. Oh my goodness. This here is a vegetable that can be eaten, but you can also use it as a baseball bat. True story. No, not really. It would probably explode, but it would be good fun to try out. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm not only going to show you what this really is and talk about it, I'm going to take you around our veggie garden for a what's growing now here at the start of the year in January veggie garden tour. Let's get into it. So this here is a baseball bat gourd, or a cricket bat gourd. It looks more like a baseball bat, or a Roman trumpet gourd. Ooh. Really, its name is New Guinea bean, and it's not a bean at all, but like I said, a type of gourd. Maybe it's got the name bean because it does taste a bit beanish. It's more zucchini-ish for me and it actually is really good. This is the first time, by the way, we've grown New Guinea bean. I've tried it a few other times, but I missed the timing and it really does like a good start to summer and plenty of water to get it up and running. But once it is up and running, it's like a pumpkin vine. We've also got some watermelon that I'm trying this variety for the first time too. It's supposed to be one of the biggest watermelons in the world. So this is where I started the watermelon vines. They're still all mixed up with some of these long baseball bat gourds. There's plenty of them coming on now too. But here's one that's hanging down. It's starting to actually get pretty heavy already. So I'm gonna have to put a net underneath this to support the weight. And here's another little one here. This is going to be very interesting. I haven't grown this variety of watermelon before. There's several around here. There's one on the ground right at my feet and there's some in the garden bed. It's going willy-nilly, it's going all nuts. Along with these few hanging watermelons, we've got these bitter gourds. This is a Japanese bit, bitter gourd that just keeps coming back every year. You just can't get rid of the thing, but I'm trying to work out a way that we can eat them. I know the Asian community out there really love these, but no matter what I do, salting or whatever, rinsing them out, boiling them or sauteing, they still are a bit bitter for the fam to eat. Don't like them that much, but we'll keep working on it because it still is food. Look at this whopper here. Hokey crikey. Tell you what, at this size, I'm not sure how good they are to eat. Probably not great, but it is a pretty spectacular gourd, don't you reckon? Oh my gourd. Now if I bring you down just a little bit further, all scattered around these bitter gourds are these little Kent pumpkins. The Japanese pumpkin, they just keep on keeping on. I think it's over two years now that this pumpkin vine has been growing. It dies a little bit back during winter and then it just explodes again through our summer. And as these grow, I'm going to have to also support them. Otherwise, they'll probably break and fall down. And knowing my luck, they'll fall down as I'm walking underneath one of them and it'll scone me right on the scone. Yeah, I didn't realize a pumpkin could turn into a triffid. But this one has. I started pretty much at the back of the veggie garden. So we'll finish the back and then we'll go up to the front. You can usually see about eight garden beds in here at the back of the gourd tunnel. But as you can see, the pumpkin vine and some weeds have taken over this whole area. In this first bed here, this is a plastic recycle bed made from coffee cups and other types of soft plastics really good idea to use them as garden beds and other products and i've talked about that before on my channel but in here i've got this lovely elephant yam i'm looking forward to being able to harvest it at this at the end of the season we can actually eat it for the first time and see what it's like and around the elephant yam i've put in some chilies three nice chili plants i think this is a bird's eye chili looking healthy and great even though it's all totally just about overgrown in fact i might have to take you through over to the other side. As we do go around to the other side, I just want to point out 
these giant banana trees. They're growing fantastic. There's several bunches I need to cover. The problem is they're so tall and it's getting more dangerous the older I get to get up them. And I don't want that anymore, even though they're great producers. So this row here are dwarf banana trees. They don't get that high, so I'll be able to easily manage them. Now we'll make our way back up to there and looking across where that pumpkin vine is taken over. So this is the gourd tunnel there on the right hand side or your left and in here across the other side is where we were looking at that elephant yam. This here is an asparagus bed and it's going well but I'm letting it grow out now and I actually planted more asparagus this year so that I could fill this bed in because on the other side or the other half of this bed I did have ginger growing in it and I've moved that ginger to some other beds that you can't see at the moment. It's gonna take me probably half a day to cut this all back now and get access in there. But it is interesting to see how the plants are competing with each other and nothing's really smothering anything out. Let's just walk over more pumpkin vine and more pumpkins growing. It's gonna be another glut of pumpkins. On the right here, you might remember I planted that Jolly Jumper type corn. Well, that has matured now, and it's actually past maturity. Let's have a look at a cob. Rip this fella off. The corn grew well. And we had a few that were okay, but at the end of the day, I actually left it a little bit long, but that's okay because what I'm gonna do is I wanna dry this crop out, and I wanna turn it into some corn flour or corn grit or other things. I've got a little mill, haven't tried it yet. I'm gonna probably plant another crop of corn, the same type in this bed here, or one of those other ones, I haven't decided yet, probably that one. And that one, I'm gonna harvest a sweet corn. I just wanna also show you that on this corn here, I've had some asparagus pea that have come up on their own and I've left them in there. So I'm gonna keep this corn growing and standing upright as a natural live growing trellis to support the asparagus pea. There's more asparagus pea on the other side as well of here, but you can see it's, well, it doesn't look like any normal pea, but it does taste like asparagus. Mmm, it's really good. It's very much like asparagus, but it also has a pea taste too. So it's a bit of a cross, pea, bean, asparagus. Mm. I wanna show you this, in this last bed here, you can see this greenery coming up. What I did was I got some mustard that had gone to seed and dried out. And all I did was just go like this over the bed and that'll probably produce more as well. And then just left it and you can see that I've got all these mustard seedlings that can be used as micro veggies. Because it's mustard, they're a bit pungent. You can use them to flavor dishes or salads just to add a little bit of extra spice. In this second row of garden beds, remember the old Florida weave that I did for the tomatoes that I grew in here? Well, they're long gone, way too hot for them. And I'm leaving that bed rest a bit. The one in the middle here, I've got some lemongrass, which has really taken off on me. I didn't expect it. I transplanted it from lemongrass along our fence line. And I decided to take that away because we got the fence redone. And you can see it's just exploded and taking over the middle of the garden bed here. There's also a native basil in that bed. Oh gosh, it's pungent. I tell you, it's a little bit too pungent for us. We've been trying it in cooking, although it's an Australian native and it grows really easily. Perhaps I'm using it wrong. And then in here, I've got a ground nut, which is something I'm trialing. And over here, it's a karache, Chinese keys, a perennial spice, supposed to be a bit like ginger. And we've got that habanero chili. I overwintered it and now it's coming back with full vengeance. I made a magnificent sauce out of this plant and it looks like we'll be getting another big harvest. So I'm looking forward to making even more sauce with it. Along the center here, we've got 
a depleted artichoke. Only one plant went to seed and I'm gonna keep the seeds for it. The rest of these plants are suffering really badly through the heat of summer. The key is to try to keep them growing through that second term to get a good crop out of them. One that went to seed early is a bit of a abnormality. Hopefully the rest will all start growing flowers at the same time and I can get a decent harvest out of them in the coming months. Down the other end is beetroot. I left a lot of that beetroot in, there's three different types. We've had enough of beetroot, but what I'm trying to do is let it go to seed. And again, that might take a little while too, before it triggers the beetroot to go to seed, so I can collect the seed and then grow some new young plants. Moving along to this middle section here, we've got some Jerusalem artichoke. It won't start maturing until another month or so. It matures towards the end of summer, historically. On this side, I'm actually growing some sugar cane and there are some small tomato plants that have come up on their own at the wrong time of year. But I'm interested to see if this tomato plant is more adapted to the heat. And if so, I'd love to be able to grow that through our summers. So let's see how that goes. I think it's a cherry type tomato or a medium type tomato. Here is our Thai basil that always grows like a champion all year round. We've got some verbena herbs here, which is a beautiful smelling and tasting herb on just about anything. To the right of the verbena is some sweet potato that I'm growing in a container. And here we've got strawberries that I'm growing in half wine barrels. And what I wanna do is see if I can over summer these strawberries through the off season and see how they come back in winter when the strawberry season is in its prime in this part of the world. And the last bed here, this is all Egyptian spinach. It's a spinach substitute. It's a nice tasting plant. I've talked about it before, especially in my videos about growing things in hot climates and what grows best. This one here when English spinach and the normal spinach won't grow very good or at all at this time of year. Egyptian spinach is such a great substitute for salads, for stir fries and quiches and all those types of things you would use spinach in. And now basically we're coming back to where we started. I've got that baseball bat gourd just over there in that first garden bed. But here is more Egyptian spinach. And then we've got a Chinese potato growing here. First time again for me. And it's growing extremely vigorously through the hottest part of the year. Normal potatoes won't grow at this time of year. So this is my substitute potato crop. I'm gonna be keen to see what I get of a harvest and what it tastes like and if it is indeed a decent substitute for standard potatoes. And on this side, I grew some capsicum. They're not going too well. Mites have knocked them around and the fruit fly, but we're getting the odd capsicum. I think these are Hungarian wax ones. And this one's a decent one. We're getting enough to put in salads and stir fries, etc. But the plants are pretty depleted and, and horrible. And it hasn't been a success story, unfortunately, for that crop. Next to them over here, I'm growing some eggplant. They've been attacked by mites and insects as well, but there's not a lot I can do about that. I'm an organic gardener. I might spray a little bit of pest oil over them and see how that goes, or I might just leave them fight through, keep the water and the fertilizer up and try to get them to a stage where they're producing decent fruit. And these are a really giant eggplant. So I probably won't need a ton of fruit. I only need one or two per plant and that should be a great harvest anyway because of the size apparently of these types of eggplant. And down the end here, the pumpkin plant has taken over those beds. I've been trying to grow a few chilies and I've got a tomato plant here. And down the very end is a type of canna that has crept into our garden. I don't know how it did it. I haven't ever planted canna in our vegetable garden, but I thought it was turmeric initially, so I just left it grow. And now it's about 20 feet high, and it's uh, obviously not a vegetable, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to plant that somewhere else. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this veggie patch walk around. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share this video around because it helps my channel out more than anything else. I'm off now. 
to play ball. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.